Hey guys, Sugar Daddy Shaves here, and we are, um, we've got a mail call video here. I'm going to run through the, uh, the stuff that we have so that you can uh, know what I'm going to, um, I'll go into a little bit more detail after we kind of run through all the gear. So you might know then if we have something that you might be interested in uh, that will come later on in the video. Um, a lot of hardware not really too much in terms of software um why don't we cover the software first uh mr jones is a um kind youtube viewer and here is autumn ash from southern witchcrafts and he had a couple of other autumn uh, aftershave products that he had and another one from southern witchcrafts is samhain is kind of how it's pronounced how it's uh, spelled um, I think Saul Ween is the actual technical pronunciation. Uh, and then uh, Autumn Glory from Sterling. This one had some uh, like fir, pine, you know, cedar kind of, uh, kind of woodsy notes. Very interesting with, uh, uh, with that. It's not, as, it's not as forward on that. Um, anyway, uh, see now I'm getting into details. Um, and so... Uh, uh, Mr. Jones was so uh, kind to donate those to my channel, so I'll be using those. I tell you what, I uh, I unwrapped the stuff at the post office, and I got that autumn ash out, and I said, you know what, I'm not smelling like anything right now. I threw some of that autumn ash on, and holy cow, it was amazing. I I just I didn't know that I liked that scent so much because what I had tried before was a sample of the soap. And we all know that in liquid form, the uh, the aftershave is going to present the the different notes in a much more clear way as a medium. And man, I was just enjoying that for hours. And so, what a blessing that is! What a kindness he he showed me there. So that's the software that we've gotten in here recently. Uh, I kind of stocked up um, because I bought. A big old box of hardware uh, when you um, when you want to sell your gear there's a couple ways you can do it right you can do a uh, a way where you are working hard to price and sell each individual piece and you're able to ship it and maybe you'll offer shipping discounts uh, if people consolidate and buy multiple items and, and you have to take pictures and then respond to people and ship out as needed. Some people choose to go the opposite way where they will discount it pretty heavily, stick it all in a box and sell it as a big lot. And that can be great if the majority of the stuff that you is something you like, or if you know enough about the market to know that, you know, so it's so and so I can sell this part and keep what I like. And in this case, I was able to buy a very, nice box of hardware and there's three categories in there a few of the pieces i'm so looking forward to trying out then the middle category are some pieces that i've tried out but i haven't had on my channel in a long time and my technique is also kind of improved and changed over time and so i'm looking forward to giving those a revisit even though they weren't favorites of mine in the past and i, I had sold them and then the third section is ones that i've used before and I, I just don't think they're going to be able to step into my, my den. Both of those last two sections are likely ones that will get resold, but, uh, but then I'll be able to keep the ones that I, that I like, and I'm saving a ton of money because the person I bought it from didn't want to do all that. He just wanted to send out a box, and that's what he did. It's all done out of his hair. I, however, I'm going to put the work in to be able to, uh, to s sell the stuff, market it, um, uh, on the secondhand market, that sort of thing. The biggest thing I was looking forward to uh, getting is this guy right here. This is the Sterling Stainless Steel Razor. Nice ra uh, leather case that they come in these days. And I love the beautiful color of this as well. We'll unpack that in a minute. Let's just go through the stuff. Um, oh, before I go too far, this one did not come in the, um, the big hardware box that I bought. This was an individual purchase from uh, somebody. I got a great deal on it. This is a That Darn Rob handle, and it's the Fanchurian that he's 
noted for, and it's either a version one, maybe a version two. And what attracted me with this one is the beautiful colors here. And, uh, and you, there's a few thousand uh, that darn Rob handles now that he's moved to Chisel and Hound. And this ergonomics really looked good for me. And then I saw the loft here is a little more than I often see. And I think it might, that could mean that it has more, uh, more of an easy splay, something I might really enjoy. So looking forward to trying that guy out. All right, now to the big box of hardware. Um, about nine or so razors we're talking about. Um, there are also some uh, like brush stands, razor stands, that sort of thing, but I'm not going to cover those here. So we have the Sterling razor. And the other piece that I was definitely big smiles interested in getting was this Feather, the Feather ASD2. I have had this model, uh, this type of razor on my channel before, and I tell you what, it was good and bad. It was bad because it was difficult to find because it's so mild. Any other blades that worked really well with it, but it was good because when you put a feather blade into it, it's magic. Okay, I see I'm, I'm, I'm going into details there. I need to back off. All right, um, and in the category of, I'm probably just gonna sell it, is the R41 from Muley, and that is just very aggressive much more than I can tolerate. I also, um, I am guessing that this razor here, the uh, Mercure Futur, or Future, I, it's, I don't know how it's exactly pronounced. This is the chrome version, the, the polished version. And I, I'm gonna kind of bet the farm that when this thing gets wet and slip, uh, soapy, lathery, it's got to be slick, right? And so I think this probably won't stick around too long, but I'm really looking forward to trying out, trying it out anyway to see if that assumption is true. It sure is pretty. Uh, I like the look of it. I know that in the past with the satin finish one that I was able to use, I definitely got to look forward to the shades with it. And as I mentioned that, I did get the satin one as well. And these aren't premium razors in the sense of materials because they are just the uh, zinc alloy uh, interiors. And so you've got to be careful about water and corrosion, especially when parts start to lose plating. Uh, one that I probably am not going to keep around is the uh, Vikings blade, the Vulcan. I've never been a fan of that brand. I kind of felt like they, they kind of cheated me a little bit um, in my, when, with my first purchase from them years ago. Uh, and I kind of fell for some of their hype. And I've learned since then. However, this came in the set. And so why not? I'll, put it, I'll bring it to the channel. We will evaluate it. I'll try to be as fair as possible. Um, and, uh, and so we can get an evaluation out there of how this thing uh, shaves. And, uh, and tell people the good and the bad, and then they can decide, make their own decision about, about that. Uh, oh, and the other one I will be selling, and this is uh, not selling because of a bad reason, because of the, the Razor, but here is the Razor Rock Game Changer. And uh, I would be selling it because I already have one. So sometimes when you buy a lot, um, a box of stuff you end up with some repeats and that was one of them uh, maybe actually the only one technically speaking then one like the mercure uh, futures um, the rockwell and this one actually came in the case pretty cool and this foam is a little difficult to open up there but it's the Stainless razor from Rockwell, the 6S. And I sold mine a couple of years ago after I got my Carve razor. And I'm, I never looked back. I never turned, I never wished at all that I hadn't sold it because the Carve is, it matches me better. Uh, but that was a while back. What if I try the Rockwell again? It's always good to revisit things sometimes. I'll, I'll try, I'll do a couple of shaves with it. And, uh, and we'll just uh, see how it goes because it is still a uh, beloved razor out there 
in the world. So we'll give it another try, but likely at the end, I'll be passing this on to somebody else as well. And uh, I believe that is, that is all of the hardware. There are a couple of odds and ends that will be coming at the end that I'll show you, but let us get to the main reason I spent the money because I thought, you know what, if I sell every other razor in this lot, I'll probably recoup the cost I paid and I'll still end up with the Sterling razor basically for free because of all the work I'd be doing in marketing things correctly, uh, in pricing them and being patient just in case they don't sell that sort of thing. So um, here's the Sterling box. I assume is, is what this razor would have come in. And uh, they come in this excellent leather pouch. And the, it's interesting, the zippers on the Razor Rock bags are very hefty, big, thick, sturdy. But I immediately noticed with the Sterling that it was a much more fine zipper. It's smaller, no, no drop in quality, I, I don't think. It seems like a nice um, case that's gonna last a good long time. They're just different. I think they were going for something a little bit more uh, classy instead of something quite as robust like the Razor Rock pouch. So here we go. And there's a kind of a, car, a cardstock uh, thick thing right there to help the lid keep its shape. And same for the back here as well. Right here is a place to keep a tuck of blades. And you can see the razor is here. And then there's actually a good bit of space over here. Probably soap samples or some odds and ends. If you use a little uh, measuring spoon to, to hook out soap, it could go here. The syringe that I'm... Uh, famous for using can go in there as well. So this is how it comes. It the leather feel is very nice, and you have a pocket down here at the bottom to nestle the the end of the razor, but then elastic here to keep that razor in place. No matter what happens, it's very secure right there. And so now we can move on to the business end. But I'm really glad to. Um, to have this case as well. I think that's a neat part of it. Obviously, I, that's a, a good chunk of the amount of the razor. And uh, we'll do a, a little bit more of an analysis uh, of this razor probably later because I want to look at the cost because there are a few weaknesses in this razor, visually speaking. And, uh, and so what I want to do is take the cost of it retail, subtract the cost of the case there, and then see what other razors might be comparable. You know, what are you getting for the money uh, to make that decision? Because like the base plate isn't quite finished like a Wolfman might be, but this isn't the cost of a Wolfman. So that wouldn't be a fair comparison, you know? So let's find a razor that would be a fair comparison on the in the price area and, and then compare them more fairly. So this is the original handle with the Sterling stainless razor when we first saw pictures of it as Rod released those. And I thought that just doesn't look all that attractive. It looks like kind of a, a claw hammer. You know, you've got your grip and then a really skinny part up here and then a big old clunky head. And so I, I didn't really, I was a little disappointed to be honest with you um, because I was looking forward to what Sterling might bring uh, to the market in terms of a stainless razor. And uh, the good thing is he did release two other handles when he when this razor did finally come to market and i like either one of those uh, probably better than this one but since i bought this used i didn't really get to pick right uh, and so we're going to use that as a learning opportunity i'm going to shave with this one i can't wait and so it's going to be my next shave and i'll be using it holding it like this and also i could choke up on it a little bit and if I, it seems like if I get my middle finger here 
and my thumb kind of on the other side, that's plenty of grip. And then my uh, index finger could be a guide. And so that's a little bit closer to the grip uh, area that I might be used to. And so we could try it a couple of different ways to see how things go. Uh, and, but in terms of the knurling and just the beauty of the, the grip itself here, it's, it's just terrific. It's just the right amount of grip. It is, it's not grating on your skin or not too rough or anything like that, but it does feel very confident, confidence inspiring. I don't think it's going to slip at all because this is a very aggressive brazier. I also think that it's possible a, uh, a hold on the bottom part down here could make the, the weight of the razor uh, benefit me. I'll probably have to ride the cap to keep that aggression from messing me up. And also, I was this is one of the reasons I was so interested in trying. I was so interested in getting, but I always held back because he said in the description he likes aggressive razors and even the standard base plate and that's what this is even the standard base plate was one that was still quite aggressive and if you like to shave on your slim at a nine you know your vintage lead adjustable at a nine or a rockwell at a five or a six or you know, he listed all of these aggressive type uh, calibrations and uh, none of those were where I enjoyed shaving. And so that made me think I might as well not even try this guy. But when this great price came along, I said, well, this is a great way to try it. And the price is so good that I'll be able to make my money back even if I have to sell this, sell this back to the world. And surely somebody's going to want it, right? So uh, I'm, I'm so excited to be able to try this out. But it is a two-hand, a uh, double-edged double sword because I'm really excited. However, I know it's probably going to be too aggressive for me to use uh, on a daily basis. Maybe even too aggressive for me to use once, <laughs> you know, once a week or once a month. I don't know. We'll see. And um, so looking forward to this uh, so much. Um, so why don't we go ahead and go into a little bit more detail, um, and maybe I don't have to do a, a sterling, I'll do a separate video anyway. Um, but the, uh, the finish on the handle is just excellent. No complaints at all about that. It's got a nice uh, gloss to it, a very nice polish. I think Rod said that he uh, got it polished to a certain number, and then going past that number to the next increment up, would have just made it super expensive because of the labor to achieve that quality. And I agree with him. I don't think it needs to be polished any more than that, than what he was able to do. Uh, I, I just think it's, I think it's terrific. I think it looks uh, pretty in terms of the knurling design he has here. You've got some spacing down here with the rings at the very bottom that add a little bit of interest at the end. And uh, the fit, in terms of the fit, Everything coming together, it feels very good, very precise as, uh, as everything gets attached. The, uh, the bolt action and all that uh, feels very good, uh, very uh, secure feeling. The, I think the top cap doesn't quite have the same level of polish as this area of the handle. And so we start to maybe see some of the weaknesses of it. I do think, uh, and this is, of course, is just an aesthetics thing, these uh, markings, the uh, grooves that he put on the top cap, I think they definitely go with the flow of this razor, and I, I like them. I think they're attractive. And on the inside, if you guys have ever seen a machined Blackland Blackbird, that's kind of what you see in here. The outside has been polished, and you don't see the machining marks and lines. But there's not really not a reason to polish the inside here because it's never seen, right? So I don't have a problem with that at all. But that is what you'll see here. It's not only more of a matte finish in there, but you do see the CNC marks like going back and forth where it went uh, around the bolt, you know, to clear away that kind of thing. You will see that there. 
and of course with a, a Wolfman or a Timeless or a um, the the kind of the original uh, charcoal goods lineup uh, that you wouldn't see any of that uh, with them uh, carve you wouldn't see it there either uh, now also we have to remember that this is the razor that he was able to bring totally in house in the U.S. his original uh, manufacturer that he contracted with at the beginning turns out later on he found out that part of their process was out of the USA and he said nope that's not good enough and that's called that caused some delay in releasing the razor and so we finally got it but and it's all made in the USA so we can take some pride in that now again we're seeing similar machining marks here on the top plate and then this has the rails here, like the, uh, the Game Changer, the uh, Wolfman Gorilla, a few of the others, uh, Gillette Goodwill, a vintage piece, have something sticking out of the top of the base plate that goes into a recessed area in the top cap. Where many other razors do the opposite. You have something coming out of the top cap into the base plate and there's nothing wrong with that at all it seems to hold the blade uh, pretty well it, the blade did move a, a hair it moved a tiny amount but to be honest i don't think that's something i'll ever check because it moves such a small amount i don't think it's a, a an amount to to amount to anything inconsequential is my belief and so it's going to hold it securely no adjustment needed uh, with that uh, note and it's not polished it's kind of a matte finish around on the sides you know and since you can see the milling marks uh, here are the machine marks it's definitely not polished up in this area now the bottom has been polished and he did add some uh, engraving there and it says uh, da -da, made in the usa and it says st dash and then a number and dash and then another number and so you'll get a serial number there uh, for your razor. So the bottom is polished. He has grooves cut into the safety bar here. And this is, you do see some machine marks there. But it looks like the side has kind of been polished. Um, the side edge along here has been polished, but the top of it hasn't really. Is this going to change the way it acts? Probably not. Matter of fact, it might even make it a little slicker with those machining marks being there because then that, uh, just like these bigger grooves were put in, it may allow for easier movement. So it could actually be a good thing in terms of performance. However, if you're going to spend almost $200 on a razor, then this is, that's why I'm telling you uh, these kind of things. Uh, but in terms of the everything fit together very nicely, the, the top cap on top of the base plate uh, was very good. So on one side it says SSC for Sterling Soap Company and the same exact thing on the other end. And obviously we have these big grooves, but there's such a large gap between the safety bar and the blade edge that you almost don't, don't need these grooves. You're not going to have to worry about uh, the hair draining away from this razor. It's not, it's not going to clog up at all because there's just so much exposure. Got a little bit of weight to it just just enough it doesn't feel too heavy and so uh, that's it so in a sense the bottom has been polished but and the sides have but the rest is kind of machine marks and or a matte type of finish and so if you come at it with a um, uh, like an eye that you're going to get the blackland polished experience or a wolfman polished experience timeless um, you know, the charcoal goods, then you might be a little let down with these machine marks, that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to have to look at the prices, though, and see. I did bring a blade. And so let's put that in there. I don't believe I'll be able to get it super close to the... I'm going to use a Gillette Silver Blue for the next shave. It's kind of my go-to blade, and so I figure with my Sterling Razor, the inaugural shave will be with a blade I really enjoy in so many 
different razors. And so if we take the blade, you could put the blade on top of the base plate here. But I usually would probably tend to, and this is what I do with my Wolfman Gorilla and the other razors that have this setup where they have a post on the base plate. I would do it this way on the uh, top cap first and then settle this guy down. And he's not lined up very well right now. And he's actually, there we go. But then once I get a little closer, just take a, by now actually it, it is uh, usually are, yep, and it just sits right into place where it goes. And there we go. I, I dearly wish I could, I could uh, make it a little closer, but see, you can even, you can probably see the gap. If I get close, it, it goes out of focus. Um, and so there's a lot of gap there. But here's the thing. Top cap, base plate, if the if the even if there's a lot of gap, if that blade edge, the cross section we're looking at, if that blade edge doesn't really stick out past the line between the top cap and the safety bar there, then it's not all that much exposure, even though it's got a ton of gap. And so it's possible to have a high gap blade without with even neutral exposure if you have that safety bar sticking out more. You know, that sort of thing. And so just because it's got a large gap doesn't mean it's going to be nasty. I think Rod's words mean it's going to be nasty because he told us about it. Um, so there we go. It's all loaded up with a blade. It definitely is positive exposure because I'm able to line up my eyesight with the safety bar and look across it and see the top of the top cap, or at least the most outer edge part of it. And I do see the blade coming over that plane and so it is a definite positive exposure razor so we'll see how it goes uh, so the next shave I'll do I will use this that darn Rob brush matter of fact I'm going to get my trusty 3D bowl down here and oh this is a good segue because the next shave, I will be discarding temporarily my syringe in favor of an idea I mentioned on my channel a while back, in favor of a jigger. This particular one has graduations, goes all the way up to 40 milliliters, and so that would be four of these four syringes and I usually don't go over four syringes if I do happen to uh, remembering that I refilled this once is a lot easier than remembering how many times I refilled that syringe and so then at the end I'll probably be able to look at how much water I had left I'll start with 40 each time look at how much water I have left and then I'll know I'll have a good nice total amount of water and, and instead of counting syringes so that'll be fun so let us get, and I'm going to start soaking my Fanchurian here. Very nice. Uh, so the Fanchurian is going to be the next shave in terms of the brush. And I, uh, I'll probably do the Autumn Glory as the uh, post shave. And I brought my Barrister and Man Soft Heart Sandalwood is the soap. And then we'll be using, uh, I love that scent so much, and it'll, I think it'll be a great backdrop for the Sterling Razor to work. Is there anything else to say about the, uh, the Sterling Razor? Um, after I try it out, I'll know whether I might potentially be trying to swap this handle out with somebody else um, with, for one of those other designs that had the uh, grippy part, the knurling part, a little higher. I think that will be something I enjoy more. But I'll be learning with this one. Sometimes it's good to get what you don't want when you have the flexibility of being able to potentially sell it or swap it out. Temporarily get what you don't want.
because I'll be able to see if holding it at the end here has some advantage. And I may learn something. I may even prefer it. I still think it looks a little odd, but, you know, who cares? Uh, so the top cap has a good polish on it, not a mirror polish by any means. And if you recall the Wolfman razors, uh, they he created a high mirror polish in recent years. But before that, he had a basic high polish, a basic polish, and it's not up to that level. But it's, it's pretty attractive, and of course, you can polish it yourself more if you want with a Brasso or something like that. Um, so, uh, looking forward to getting into this guy and have him hack up my face. Okay, a couple little other little odds and ends in terms of the mail call. AliExpress is where I have gotten uh, some shaving items. That's where I got the jigger. And it was great because it just cost a couple of bucks. And I also bought this. thought I'd show it to you guys. It's not a shaving item. It is a cell phone holder for your car. You can turn it upside down like this. And this clip here can go over your sun visor. And then this clip you open up and you put your cell phone in so that you can see it while you're driving. Now, you can also turn it right side up, and here is the dash above your speedometer. Often, that with most cars, that's a shelf, and so then you could put that clip over the shelf. And so now, this opens up this way, and so right in front of your line of sight, you've got your cell phone. And this was just like three bucks, and so I decided to try it out. Sometimes a design can be simple and work well, right? So we'll give it a shot. And the last item that I got in the mail today was this. Uh, on one of, I think it was a Badger and Blade forum. Uh, it could have been one of the other ones like Damn Fine Shave or the Shave Nook that I am a member of. Um, somebody posted online that uh, Saponificio Veracino was having a special deal. If you used a certain code, then you could get this for not very much money. And I did. And what these are, are balm samples of all their different scents. Now, I have a lot of their soaps. So the majority of these, I'm going to know how they smell. But I tell you what, Tundra Artica, mm, that's so good. I love that soap so much. I'm looking forward to trying the balm. I really like all their scents. I mean, there's really not one that I've tried that I don't like. Here's the guy right here. I've been so curious about Hubebe. I've been very curious about that one. They're expensive soaps, and I haven't seen one on the used market that I was able to purchase. Somebody always seems to jump in there and get it instead of me. Uh, but this balm should let me sample it as a scent to see if maybe I want to save up for it or look more intently on the used market or something like that. So this is why I ordered, took advantage of that deal. Because I, I want to get the smell of that Kubebe and see if I like it. And then one other one I was really curious about. And man, I'm looking at all these. And I'm liking them all. Desert Vetiver. I'm a big Vetiver fan. So we'll see if their take and twist on it to make it kind of a desert Vetiver. We'll see if that is something that I'd like. And so those two scents specifically is why I bought this whole thing. Um, I have never tried the Mirto de Sardinia, so that'll be a nice one to try from the description. I think I ruled it out in terms of something I probably wouldn't be interested in. Uh, I think I have tried Stella Alpina, but it's possible I may not have, so that one could be new as well. The Apuntia, I've got that soap, and I know that I like it. And the Felce Aromatica, I have that. Soap, I believe. The 70th anniversary. I've got that one. Lovely, lovely soap scent. Manna de Cecilia. That's a nice one, too. Dolomiti. I definitely enjoy that scent. This was just a sampler on the uh, Saponificio Veracino's website. Cosmo. Another really nice scent that I have the soap of. Oh, Oh, and then they sent Dolomiti again. This is the shower gel. 
Okay, so I've got some of the sensor repeated just in a different capacity, right? And then Tundra Artica. Oh, that's my favorite scent of them all. Sandalwood based with a little bit of lichen and cranberry. And I think that is just such a marvelous combination. And then uh, shower gel with the Mana de Cecilia. I could try these sour gels out and decide, hey, I want to buy a premium bath product. No, right now, I'm an Irish spring guy in the shower. It's really funny. Or sterling soaps. I'd have the bar soaps from them. But who knows? Something like this might be good to have on hand uh, for special occasions or uh, something like that. Um, beard wash. I don't need that. Um, and then uh, anniversary. Oh, this. Oh, an EDP sample of the 70th anniversary. Uh, that'll be nice. That'll be nice. And something also important that I've mentioned kind of before is that these balms could have different scent elements in them that I don't get from the soaps. We've talked about how the liquids have a different, uh, a different way of making the scent available. They don't mask as many of the notes as the soap can. And so I could appreciate these in a whole different way. So that'll be a lot of fun over the next few weeks to try these guys out. Very nice, very nice. Kubebe is one of those scents that my initial investigation revealed that it's just kind of a light cologne type scent. It had some notes that I thought might be nice, but then most of the things I read about it weren't super positive for a blind buy. But then when I was at a live shave going on and I was talking about it with some of the guys there and I was very encouraged with what they were saying and how much they enjoyed it. So that made me kind of switch to the other side thinking maybe I should get it. So I'm very happy to be able to try uh, the Kubebe out and the Desert Vetiver as well. Thanks to this sampler here. Awesome. Awesome. I am, I am a blessed man. And uh, about half this stuff, maybe a little bit more than half of that hardware box is uh, I, I'm kind of I have it on loan and then I'm going to be able to make some of my money back by uh, selling this stuff that, uh, that I just want to try for a temporary uh, bit and then uh, sell it back and then get some money back for that, make up that money. All right. Um, put in the work and you can get some money, right? And in the meanwhile, I get to enjoy this gear. Such a, such a blessing. All right. I think that we are good. I can't wait to try this Sterling Razor. I can't wait, but I'm also scared and concerned that I'm not going to be able to use it. <laughs> I'll definitely be riding the cap. That's one thing you can do with aggressive razors that a lot of people do. Just that's what they do. That's how they make it happen because they like the close shaves that it gives them. Some people like one-pass shaves, so they like aggressive razors, or maybe two passes. And so they ride the cap, and they like that uh, baby butt smooth result that they're able to get. All right. Oh, yeah, the, um, uh, the autumn ash. Let me tell you what. Maple, spice, smoke, amber, and cedar. I could smell the maple. The smoke and the maple what an amazing combination the the woodiness grounded it a little bit the the maple would have been maybe a little too sweet almost like syrupy if it weren't for the smoke the smoke made everything magic it just totally transformed the scent and i am I wouldn't have bought this otherwise. I usually don't buy the aftershaves, but I am so glad that Mr. Jones sent this to me. I am going to be enjoying this on a regular basis. I may not even use it after my shave. I may use it the next morning so that I can smell like it for a lot longer and perceive that scent around me instead of going right to bed. So <laughs> I may do that. I know that with the Samhain, I enjoy that scent. Uh, now that we're getting into spring, these two things aren't really in season anymore. 
but I honestly think that uh, I could wear them anytime. So very happy to be trying some of this stuff. I was blown away. I was shocked by how much I enjoyed the depth, the nuance, and the complexity of the autumn ash. And it definitely made me want to revisit the soap and try it again uh, to see if it came across the same way. All right. I think we're good. I hope this mail call has uh, piqued your interest. You know some of the things that are coming in the future weeks. You know what I need to do in the future weeks? plan for the lather games in June to get my schedule together so that I'm not doing it at the last minute. If I need to request a sample from the universe out there, the shaving universe, and uh, you know, it's great because people just help you out. People are nice like that. Um, then uh, I will be able to uh, get that in time. You know, that's important. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you at the, very soon here for the next shave. Take care. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. Good night.